Okay, Matt. So we were talking about some of the tests that you actually go through here yep. in the A2L lab. <laughs> this poor thing, it's getting a workout right now. Tell me yes, what we got is. going on right here. So this testing is doing a low temp application. So yeah. that's why you see all the ice build up on the refrigerant lines. Right. Luckily, we don't see much ice on the compressor itself. Right. Which tells us that we're not getting liquid flood no liquid back into back that into compressor. The so that's good. And then this whole contraption here, this is controlling our EVI. So this is controlling the injection into that compressor. So the injection helps control the capacity of the compressor as well as keeping that scroll set cool while we're running those higher compression ratio compressors. I got you. So automated valves here control our injection pressure and temperature. And then all the ice buildup shows us that we're running below the freezing point. Makes sense. So, Pretty cool to see some of the ice build up and some of the applications we're going to <laughs> yeah, see out in the that's field. That's what caught my attention from yep. the ways back. Yeah, Very ice always gets people's attention. Yeah, it's like, what's going on here? <laughs> yep. I haven't seen one actually do it. The only yep. time I've seen that do it, it was having some problems. But exactly. That's so what that's wanting what, to do. Right, and that's what we try to simulate is yeah. some of the challenge that we see out in the field. You know, what happens in the testing environment and how do we mitigate that compressor from, you know, seeing any effects of that condition out in the field. You bet. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, Matt, so some of the life cycle testing you're talking about yep. is really putting some of these compressors in brutal conditions. <laughs> Let's talk about this guy while we're doing it here. Yes. So earlier we saw a compressor that had ice build up on the lines, but yeah. not on the shell itself. Right. So when you see ice on the shell of a compressor, that's because there's liquid refrigerant in there. So some of the testing that we do is based on you know, flood back conditions in the field yeah. or, you know, different times where a compressor could happen to see liquid. So we'll actually take these compressors and we'll inject liquid into them while they're running. So some of these compressors like this, it might get 15 pounds of refrigerant, all liquid, every six minutes. Really? And we'll go through so many cycles of that to see how the scroll reacts, to see how the oil washout, how's that affect wow. the bearings. But you can see the ice build up. This compressor oh, yeah. running some time here. That poor thing, it's yeah. uh yeah. That one's got a rough life. And then when we're done with this testing, we'll actually tear the compressors apart then too. Do the evaluation. So we'll cut the tops and re-tear right. them down and do the full evaluation of, you know, how did that affect that compressor. Exactly. Yep. Amazing amount of lab work you have going on yes. in this facility. Yep, hours and hours of testing goes into this product for our reliability for sure. Wonderful, wonderful thing to see. Yep. <laughs> and cool looking. Yes. <laughs> so Matt, we were talking about the life cycle testing that we did over in the other A2L lab. What about the performance? So these are actual performance labs where yep. we're bringing the units in and we're getting them functional and then measuring what? So we're measuring the overall capacity of the compressor. We're measuring all the power, so the watts, the volts. Um, we can adjust the frequency anywhere from 45 all the way up to 75 hertz. Oh, sure. So for not only just applications here in the U.S., but also right. for other applications around the world. Yeah. Um, we also do the EER rating. So we combine all that together in a bunch of calculations to get the total output of that compressor. Sure. So all of those numbers, when we're looking at the performance of that compressor yes. data chart, comes all from that comes these from, rooms yep, right all here. All the coefficients and yeah. all that come from these rooms right here. Yep. And then these rooms are also A2L capable. So this whole lab space, and we have 60 of yeah. these total. Okay. Uh, if we look yeah, up, I we noticed we had a sensor up above. Sensor. So yeah. Um, works just like the ones in the life test at the okay. different rating levels and the lights flash and the ventilation comes on. So sure. each test room and each hallway space both have the ventilation capability. Their own protection. So in the yep. event that we had, you know, a, a, a catastrophic failure, we right. can actually mitigate and yep. shut it down fairly quickly. Yep. Yeah. So a lot of times we don't think about like how much work went into preparing a facility just to be able to test right. the A2L products. Exactly. In our old lab space, we had, you know, little pockets of areas yeah. that were A2L capable that had the ventilation capabilities and the sensing capabilities. Sure. But, you know, part of the investment we made here was to move all that into one area. So we expanded our capabilities. So, you know, we've been working with A2L refrigerants for probably eight to nine to 10 years. We right. help generate a lot of the building codes based on our learnings here, yeah. but also just to handle the sheer capacity of the development that went into these A2L refrigerants. Yeah, so instead of having just areas, your entire facility is now A2L yes. test compatible. Yes. So whether it's A1 or A2Ls, yep. they're all in that same facility. Exactly. Yeah, yep. like it a lot. Yep. <laughs> So Matt, one of the cool things that Copeland has the ability to do here is not only are you manufacturing your own compressors, whenever you're looking at doing some potential changes or modifications to a compressor, you literally just have your own labs where you cut them apart, 
yep. make your modifications, weld them back together, put them back into test. Yep. So you're doing a, a full uh, test and production right yes. here in the lab area. Yes, so we build a lot of the development, the new design compressors yeah. in the lab here. So we have the capability, we can build them from an empty shell all the way up to the finished product. Or like you mentioned, we can take, you know, if it's small design iterations on the top end, mm -hmm. we can actually take compressors from production, cut the tops off, rebuild them, weld them back up, and then send them on for testing. Back on to testing. Yep. That's pretty interesting. I mean, we always talk about like doing a decommissioning of a compressor mm -hmm. by cutting it open and yep. getting inside. You're actually talking about recommissioning a compressor yes. Yes. in the same process. Yep. And then we also have another lab space that we will actually tear them down and do the full analysis too. Afterwards. So after sure. we're done testing, we'll tear them apart and see what actually happened to all the internal parts and do a full analysis on that as well. I bet this was a very busy place when the transitions were starting to happen with A2Ls. And, yes. and anytime you have a refrigerant that you're looking at changing, you know, you have to see how it functions and what Correct. needs to be adapted to be able to, you know, to be precisely tuned for that refrigerant. Yep. yep. As we got into the A2L transition, we doubled our capacity out here in the lab. Oh, wow. Yeah, I could see. So it wasn't just a slight increase. We actually right. doubled our output for builds and all of our testing hours and pieces. Wow. Doubled. Yeah. And that's the thing that we're really trying to show is that this A2L transition wasn't just something that happened overnight no. because somebody said that we needed to change refrigerants. Correct. It was an entire industry investing a lot of time, a lot of manpower to make sure that we could get through this transition as safely and as efficiently as possible. Exactly. I mean, you saw the facilities here of all the investment we've made yeah. just to be able to safely handle the refrigerants and be prepared to help generate the building codes, the next line of product. Mm. Huge investments were made throughout the industry. Yeah, I, sure. could, I could see that. All right, yep. thanks for sharing this with us. Yes. All right, Matt, so we've been looking at life cycle testing. We've been looking at uh, performance testing. Yep. Now we have, can we destruct it testing? Yes. <laughs> so part of our product testing that we have to do, since it is a pressurized cylinder, is we yeah. got to make sure that it can not only withstand the normal operating pressure, but we also have to be able to handle, you know, two to three to four times that operating pressure okay. for those high pressure situations that occur out in the field. Right. So we've got a UL test chamber here. This is our hydro test. So we'll actually take compressors and we'll fill them full of hydraulic fluid. And we have to meet all that criteria, but then we also take them to failure. Right. And that's the fun part is <laughs> we'll make the compressors look like bowling balls or... <laughs> you know, see what the weakest part of that compressor was. So you it's bet. kind of fun to actually take some product to failure right. to see what fails. And that's the exciting part about it is how yeah. and when does it fail. So how much pressure are we normally talking about before, say, a standard scroll starts actually changing shape? So some of those are getting up into a couple thousand PSI. Really? Yep. Okay. Yep. And we also test CO2 in here, which is a oh. lot higher pressure. So yeah. you're talking sometimes up to six to 8,000 PSI on those okay. compressors. Okay, I can get that. You know, we were just looking at the thickness of the CO2 mm -hmm. compressors. I mean, I yep. always assumed it would be a thicker steel, right. not realizing it was almost three times the thickness. Yes. Right? You know, Correct. we're at like nine millimeter thickness, yep. you know, three eighths of an inch kind of. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of steel. Yes. So, but when you're talking normal operating pressures at 1600 PSI, you got to be able to contain that. That's true. So. And so you're going to push it three to four times that to yes. be able to see when you can actually make that thing fail. Yep. You guys have a lot of fun here. We do. <laughs> the ESCO Roadshow is so grateful for the opportunity to visit the Copeland Manufacturing Facility in Sydney, Ohio. Copeland Scroll is the brand trusted around the world to ensure reliable and efficient comfort in homes. Learn more at copeland.com.